So this set of charts gives a brief introduction and review of complex numbers and functions. Complex numbers and complex valued functions often arise in different electrical engineering courses like linear systems classes and circuits classes. So this is just kind of a little refresher on how you do computations with complex numbers and complex functions just to uh, refresh ourselves on the basics. So what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about complex numbers themselves and operations and example problems with complex numbers and then we'll move to functions that are complex valued in that when you query them with a real value it actually returns a complex number. A specific example of that would be something like the Fourier transform of a real valued signal. The Fourier transform of a real valued signal in general is a complex quantity so when dealing with these spectrums, we often take their amplitude and phase. So we'll talk about that and do some examples. So let's start with some real basic things. Let's just start with complex numbers and actually define what we mean by a complex number. Often when dealing with complex numbers, we use the notation z. So it's very normal to use z as a general variable for a complex number. And a complex number z has this form. It has equal to a plus jb. a is just a real number, just like you're used to dealing with. b is also a real number. And j is the square root of a negative 1. We say that this complex number z has a real part equal to a. And we often will use this type of notation right here, the real part of z. So this kind of script or fancy r means take the real part of this complex number and return it. So we've returned a, because this is the real part. And then the imaginary part of this complex number is this component. So if we take the imaginary part of z, that returns the number b, because b is the imaginary part of this complex number. And like I said, complex numbers and functions, we, we encounter these all the times in things like Fourier analysis, signal processing, communication theory. They occur lots of places, so this is a little refresher on how to do some basic computations. The definition of a complex number that I just provided chose to write the complex number z in what's called the rectangular form. So the rectangular form of a complex number is how we introduce z in that original definition. It's just equal to a plus jb. But this is not the only kind of way to write down a complex number. Another way to write down complex numbers that's often very useful is what's called the polar form of a complex number. When we write down z in a polar form, we write it equal to some magnitude, which we denote by r, and then we multiply that magnitude r by e to the j theta. So e is just the number e, and it's raised to the power j theta. Theta is what we call the angle or phase of the complex number z. So both of these are completely equivalent, and on the next slide we'll show graphically how and why these are equivalent. But in general, there's two forms that we often deal with. Sometimes we deal with rectangular forms, sometimes we deal with polar forms, and each one has its kind of specific use case that it's more useful to work with. Let's go ahead and take a look at what these look like in the complex plane. So here is a plot of the complex plane. This is the real axis, so the real quantity related to z gets plotted on this axis, and this is the imaginary axis, so the imaginary part of z gets plotted on this axis. If you think back to our you know, basic definition of z that we've been using, it's equal to a plus jb. So the real part of z is equal to a, so that's why we've come out here on the real axis to the point a, and then the imaginary part of z is equal to b, so we've come up the imaginary axis to b. So this dot right here is in fact the point z, in the complex plane. So if somebody told you to plot this complex number, that's one way to think through it is in terms of rectangular coordinates. Come out on the real axis as much as you need to, come up or down on the imaginary axis as much as you need to, and wherever you stop is the complex number. You can also think about complex numbers though in the polar form, and that's the form that we defined on the previous slide. In that way, what you do is you start at the origin, and you come out some distance r. r is the magnitude, so you would come out some distance r, and then you would rotate some amount theta, and where you end up is the point z again. So you end up at the exact same spot in both cases, it's just how you think about getting there is different depending on whether you think about it in terms of rectangular coordinates or if you think about it in terms of polar coordinates.
So at this point, we have defined what a complex number is. We've talked about the two different ways you can write a complex number, either in rectangular form or polar form. And we've given an example of how you can visualize a complex number in the complex plane. In the next video, we'll start talking about operations that you can perform on complex numbers.